Okay. <laughs> Good morning. It's raining outside, which means it's the perfect day to get cozy and read, and that somehow snowballed into reading a book a day for a week. I do have my TBR. Nothing specifically classifies these as book talk books other than book talkers have specifically recommended these. I want to take you along with me. I usually do these spoiler free, but because I do them in a shorter format, I'll just give you a warning in advance if I feel I'm getting too specific in a book review as we go. I also want to take you for my cozy check. I'm going to have some tea if you want to grab whatever your cozy beverage is and come read with me. Never stuck to a TBR in any of these reading challenges. I always end up changing it, but this is what we're aiming for. We'll see if it actually happens. Usually by the fourth book, I end up just finding something that's super short so that I can still enjoy reading. <laughs> My first book I know absolutely nothing about other than I've seen it everywhere on BookTok and in bookstores is Not in Love by Allie Hazelwood. I loved the love hypothesis when I read it a long time ago and then I wanted to read Bride and Check and Mate, but for some reason I never ended up picking up another book by this author. So we're going with this one. Today's story is about Eli and Rue. Why did that sound so suggestive? This is about two people who met for a date right before discovering they're on opposite sides of a very tense business takeover. Rue was a biotech engineer at Klein and Eli, who naturally she hates her, this would be very boring, is one of the business partners trying to buy the company from its current owner who also happens to be Rue's close friend. Does that make sense? I don't write synopses. The more I read, the more I realize I have no idea how to avoid spoilers for these books. So maybe come back. If there's a book you want to read that I'm reading right now, come back after you've read it or maybe while you're reading it. I'm not sure how to do this. So I, I won't say everything that happens. But right now, and spoiler, I think he's defending her in a bar from a creep. <laughs> I'm eating it up. It's gonna be a really long video because I'm only on page 17 and Ali, you can't do this to me. I'm 99% sure this is their meet cute. It has to be their meet cute. And he's already anticipating her needs. There's already that unspoken language and that's one of my favorite things in a love interest, but it has to be done correctly, not them assuming they know what's best for someone else. Them actually just looking into each other's eyes. Say less, I know exactly what you need. They've said maybe three sentences. And he's already on that level with her. You know when you look at your friends like, I want to leave now? They're already there. <laughs> page 20, if you're, if you're reading this book. Page 20. Let me know how you feel when you get to the line, hours. Let me just... <clears throat> it was good. It was a good line. just figured out what this book kind of reminds me of and it's can you keep a secret by sophie kinsella i'm pretty sure where there are two people on a plane and she's scared of flying or there's turbulence or something but she panics and thinks she's gonna die and spills all of her life secrets to this stranger next to her then finds out he's going to be her boss so while they're working together he kind of hints at little jokes of dropping basically her biggest life secrets it's really funny it's a fun time but this because they had a meet cute before they were going to be working in the same office together. He knows all of her preferences. And now they're, now they're faced with that situation. <laughs> this man, this man's creating a hostile work environment. <laughs> it's so much fun to read. I really thought I edited all the cat footage out. I'm sorry I didn't. <laughs> this is exactly the romance that I needed because I'm, I've started maybe five different contemporary romances. None of them were hitting hard. I kind of need them to when it's a shorter book. I need the tension to happen faster. Not like they don't have to get together faster. I love a slow burn, but there needs to be that chemistry, the meet cute, like something has to hook me in the beginning. This is so good. This is so good. Man is enamored. He is obsessed with her. I don't know how long I've been reading, but I think I needed to come in for a cozy check because I did not remember the last time I had water. So if you have water, if you're reading along, I'm on page 108. I feel like I'm reading this so slowly and that's okay because I'm really enjoying it all. But we're in full forest proximity. I did think, I think in the beginning I was wondering if this would be Rivals to Lovers. I wouldn't say that. There is that tension, but it's definitely one-sided. <laughs> I'm back. It's been two pages. But things escalated out of nowhere. I feel like I blinked and accidentally scanned a paragraph and missed something. I need to read this to you. I shouldn't read this to you. Does my family watch this? It's okay. <laughs> Your damn mouth, he murmured, is the most obscenely lovely thing I've ever had the burden of seeing. Allie. Now this book, okay. Again, I love the love hypothesis. It's a lot of fluff. This feels like it's older siblings. Like it's kind of hot. <laughs> People ask me what I tab. 
If it is a book like this, the line I just read you, it's getting tapped. <laughs> I don't think I could ever show this amount of loyalty to a job where it would come between me and this man. I can't- I don't know if I'm the problem or she is. <laughs> I don't know why I'm giving a play-by-play -play as if we're on FaceTime, but I made it to chapter 14. And I cannot- Why are words on a sheet of paper making me act up like this? Okay, while I'm waiting for my tea, my only complaint about the book is how predictable it is. Romance is fairly predictable and that's one of my comforts in the genre. That's why I enjoy it so much. But for some reason with this book, you know within maybe a fifth or fourth of the way through exactly how the rest of the plot's gonna be mapped out. They clicked immediately. They were unguarded and understanding. They had the physical chemistry. They had the banter. You're reading it like, oh, you're a perfect match. So I feel like I'm holding two dolls going like just kiss, except that moment's already happened as well. Basically, the only reason they're not together is one of the characters has to make up some situational rule of why they can't be, which is making him the villain of her story because you have his POV. You know he's very well-intentioned and they're two good people. So just as a reader, I wish there was something holding my attention, whether that was the character development or the plot or maybe not knowing so much of his story so that I can believe he's a villain temporarily. But it's um, not even miscommunication. It's just a complete lack of communication. <laughs> I was just complaining, but then I got to page 181. Who gave the author the right to put that in here? It's been a couple of hours. My cats woke up. I can talk again. I'm on page 327. I can't do this right now. I can't. They're so cute, and this is not a cute moment. That page I just said, that's a pretty intense, I wouldn't categorize it a sweet kind of moment, yet it was somehow so endearing that my heart was fluttering reading this. I am now at the point of the book, I think I have like 30 something pages left, and I don't want it to end. So I don't know what your preference is, but there, there's not a single fade to black in this, I don't think. It's 11, 10 p.m. I finished the book and read the epilogue, which also didn't hold back, by the way. This was so good. I think I went from this being like four stars to then maybe three stars to then three and a half, I think. That sounds like a low rating. I, I love books. That's like a sweet spot of books. I've already texted my friends that they should read this. I'm really happy I bought this and it makes me wanna go buy every other Allie Hazelwood book. I'm so ready for day two. Welcome to day two. It's still super gloomy and raining outside. I do have things to do today, so reading's going to be really interesting, but I have to add, I did not stop thinking about the book yesterday. I went to sleep and I'm pretty sure I dreamt about it. Our next pick is The Ministry of Time by Colleen Bradley. I'm so excited for this. I've heard it's a science fiction, time travel, workplace comedy romance, which I'm pretty sure encapsulates everything I love. So I'm so excited for this. I'm pretty sure it's also a debut novel. Don't quote me on that, but I guess let's get reading. Pro tip, if you don't already do this, is to put on an ambiance video. I like to do fantasy pirate ships, a Viking ship, a little cute whimsical cottage in the woods, something with Faye. Really helps set the scene. This is already so interesting to me. So they're extracting people that they're calling expats from history. And it's, it was agreed that it would be necessary to extract people from historical war zones, natural disasters, and epidemics. Uh, removing them from the past ought to, not to impact the future because they've died in their own timeline anyway. This book is going to be great in its own right. And I'm not saying there is any relation between the two, but as a Loki fangirl, that really piqued my interest. I give more details later, so this is like a fan fiction that follows five people being taken into the future to be studied by an organization and along the way a sinister plot is uncovered? Maybe? You know when you read a book that just has so much happening in so few pages, you feel like you're 75 pages in, you look down, I'm on page 25. And this is so interesting. The main character's position is called a bridge and her job is to help the expats they're extracting adjust to modern society slash being in a new time period in general. So she is, I think he's a commander. She's helping him adjust, teaching him about electricity and bacteria and basically what happened to his friends and why he 
specifically was extracted. Also this really interesting discussion going on between the people who work for the ministry about the people they're extracting because they're saying that they're refugees even though they wouldn't refer to themselves as refugees. So they've kind of stuck with the word expat even though it causes a lot of debate within the people working there. I love this. This is, am I in love? Do I love a new author? It's 25 pages. Stop making rush judgments. I'm going to word this horribly, but the balance in this book is so funny to me. The, so it's her educating him on the horrendous historical events that happened during his timeline, but also giving him modern day books, helping him adjust to modern society, what is proper. It's so funny, but then you get random comments from him talking about what he wants what he's been watching and then not wanting to watch deformed monstrosities against the will of God and he's referring to Sesame Street or because they're living together and he wants a pet and she was like how about a cat and he said oh my gosh I have to find this hold on we don't need a cat a little creature who sleeps for hours and plays with her prey we already have you it's just like jumping between the reality of taking someone with an extremely dated belief system and bringing them into the future and how he's handling this overload of information it's so great. There's also a lot of inner dialogue about the main character grappling with how to breach the topic of her being mixed race, what exactly that means to her, and how to approach him with this topic, which is creating a really interesting dynamic, and it is coming up at the part I'm in. Change of plans, we're going on a matcha date and taking our book with us. This book is in the running for at least top three books I've read this year. I would probably actually put it at number one right now. I haven't read a lot of good books this year. We're back from the cafe. We're kind of running into spoiler territory again, but they're running these exams to test for lack of empathy in the expats because they have this theory that after time traveling, since they have no connection to the people or essentially the new world that they're being introduced to, that they'll have a lack of compassion as well as suffering from the PTSD after enduring all of this, that because their sleep will be affected by that, they'll be processing their day and every event that they have in a more negative light. At least that's the theory. I really like this book. Oh, he's also tried weed for the first time which is really interesting. <laughs> I do have my one complaint as usual, which is completely a personal preference. I don't let this impact rankings because it was the same with Seven Days in June. There are a lot of modern references. And whenever that happens, even though it makes sense in this context, it just pulls me out of the story. That's always been my biggest bookish pet peeve, but it doesn't really impact anything. It's just me. I got to this page and had to put the book down because I forgot there's romance involved, but especially romance that has that kind of comment in it. I'm almost done. I think I have to sleep on my review of this because this was so anticlimactic. I don't think I can sleep. What did I just read? There were so many good themes introduced but then none of them were really fleshed out and it kept rotating genres instead of being all of the things it was advertised to be it started as something really exciting with speculative fiction and then it moved into following the mundane daily activities of the unnamed main character and it switched to like a brief romance and then at the end it was a spy thriller but because everything was so lost that this i just didn't care about the end or the plot twist anymore my thoughts are going to be as disjointed as this book. Okay, I first kind of fell in love with the random tangents that would interrupt the plot from the main character, but as it goes on, it's not fun to dislike her anymore because you realize here is someone with top secret clearance, has so much responsibility, yet she is the most clueless main character that does not care what's going on. And the book's even broken up with little comments of you're probably upset that I didn't care what was going on. Yeah, I am, because that continued and you remained clueless the whole time. I don't know if anyone's read Kingdom of the Wicked. I did have a fun time with that book, but it was the same thing where the main character almost couldn't be bothered to figure things out even though there were so many anomalies and maybe in this case the main character was so desensitized to them. No, I can't make that excuse. I'm sorry. I got to page 279 when I lost all interest in whatever was happening and read I was just a doll with no more inner intelligence than a bottle of water. It almost feels like they had to just wrap it up. Everything is so rushed at the end. I do think a disjointed style can be really fun, but usually there's some sort of theme tying them together and maybe it does exist, 
maybe the character arc exists. I just didn't notice either of those things. It felt like metaphors were being thrown around and I wasn't picking up what the author was putting down. So once it really began feeling like a self-insert, I kind of lost a lot of interest in it. Good morning. Um, I'm sorry you had to see me like that last night. <laughs> I did sleep on it. I think I liked the book. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I would recommend this book, but only under very niche guidelines. I think overall I'm going to give it three stars. The beginning, easily a four to five star book for me. The second half, the only thing that kept me going, uh, the author touches on colonialism, gender, racial identity. Those takes were so well written, I would read them as a standalone book. Everything else, I will probably block out in the next two weeks or so. So if I'm suddenly raving about this book three years from now, it's because I only remember the good parts. <laughs> to poorly summarize 45 minutes of rambles, what initially grabbed my attention was how much this book was trying to do. Now I kind of wish it just made one or two of those elements really strong. I think I mentioned that there wasn't a character art. A book doesn't have to have that for me to like it, but the main character is very one tone throughout it. So three stars. I am for sure keeping this book just to be confused. This is a what did I just read kind of moment. But moving on to day three, a book I'm genuinely scared to read before I let go by Kennedy Ryan. I have only seen four star to five star reviews of this, which always makes me really skeptical. So I'm like, am I going to dislike it? But I've also been putting it off because I figured if it's that good, it'll get me out of a reading slump. So I'm just nervous. I have no idea what this book is about, but disclaimer, if I misquote something, it is an arc. I have a brief summary in a second, but I'm still fangirling about how hopeful this book is that things do get better. And do I like Second Chance now? We're on page 48. We did get to the dual POV, which is exciting and reviving my interest because it's been slow so far, but I don't mind that because usually that means the romance is probably gonna make me emotional. I do love the friendship so far. I think sometimes romance books forget that the main characters need strong friendships and that's in this. There is a support system. So the story takes place post-divorce. It's been a couple years of co-parenting and continuing to run a business together. We primarily follow Yasmin on her journey of healing, but the big question is, are they actually over each other and why are they such bad liars? Uh, update before the sun goes down on page 125 and the only comment I have is that this feels very real. I'm reading this and watching it like a movie in my head, which I didn't have with Not In Love. I'm enjoying them for very different reasons. Reasons. and I don't like second chance in romance at all ever really this might be one of my few exceptions it's written really well so even though it's a slower pace there's not a lot going on it's very easy to make these characters real people it feels like I'm sitting down with a friend and they're telling me the story of their life um, I'm on page 216 I no words no words it's a good book <laughs> it's a good book okay I'm on page 221 I think I've given so many spoilers in this video, but I guess minor spoiler alert that there, there's a trope. Potentially, there's potentially a trope, a trope I really love, really love. And if I flip this page and I'm disappointed, I think we need a break. Cozy check snack time. I grab chocolate. We're going to flip this page together. What the hell do you mean there isn't another room? Please do not. Okay. Yes, your reservation is a king-size bed. Two occupants? This is obviously a misunderstanding. They'll give us another room. There are no other rooms. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <gasps> They're sharing a room. And this... This man is overstepping. <laughs> He's really overstepping. This is my favorite use of the trope. They're talking. They're opening up about their grief. They're discussing their history, their decisions, everything that was left unsaid. I'm smiling because there's a sense of relief in that as a reader, but it does really make you want to cry. Never mind, you're actually going to cry. The way this book talks about grief and depression I'm on page 282, by the way. We still have this much left. <laughs> I don't know what time it is, but I just finished the book. This is going to be the shortest reaction probably of the week because I don't have any complaints. It was just really good. Book talk was right. This was so good.
Oh no, this is gonna be one of my regular romance recommendation rotations. I can already tell. <laughs> the number one thing that stuck out is how beautiful the communication became, how they grew together, because there are two types of romance that I like to read. One's more idealistic, it's great for escapism, it's fluffy, it's closer to fan fiction. No one's at fault, it was completely circumstantial, whatever their problems were. And it is fun. And then there are books like this that give you real life situations, what happens after the happily ever after, dealing with real life human problems and personalities and growing together. It's so good. <laughs> Final thoughts of the night. I'm not sure if I'll back this up tomorrow because I love to change my opinion on books. Four stars, I don't think that will change. And I should preface this with there are endless types of love in the world, but I do not think I have read a romance book that encaptures raw love as well as this one in years. There is something about the type of love that these two characters share the author knew what she was doing. <laughs> to day four, this is when I really start questioning my decisions. You're also gonna watch my Descent into Madness because I'm on day three of still thinking about the Ministry of Time. Did I like this book? Moving on to day four though, we have Anita de Monte Last Last by Social Gonzalez. However, I don't believe I'd be doing this story justice without sharing some of the inspiration and backstory because it is inspired by a real life person. This isn't her story, but her story is very important. It's Anna Mendieta, a very influential Cuban contemporary artist who also suffered a very tragic death. The dedication is also dedicated to her. So I wanted to share that as well. In memory of Anna and all the women who endured solitude, never knowing the rest of us were out there for my Aunt Linda and as always for my grandparents without whom I would not be here. Today's book is told over two timelines and follows two women. One, a famous artist in the 1980s and the other an art student in the 1990s. The artist dies under mysterious circumstances and is all but forgotten by the time the art student is studying the very person who was there at the death scene all those years ago. The closer the student gets to the artist's story, the more she realizes it's like looking in a mirror. I didn't know any of this starting the book, so bear with me. First check-in. It's been an hour and I have read 20 pages which is not my regular pace but this is my own fault i picked up this book because of the great reviews on book talk didn't read much about it but i did know it had to do with art students which isn't my usual cup of tea just kind of a school setting isn't my usual cup of tea unless there's some fantasy element it's a romance it's dark academia this book is not to end this update on a more positive note i do like the main character even though i've read none of her story yet that has to be a good thing. I have to read you what I just tabbed. This is in reference to Anita's husband, which is, um, then he went on to explain how only his art form, minimalism, would save us from racism and sexism and homophobia. How it was the removal of these things from the conversation of art that will allow us to see that we are all in earnest equal. R uh, men like this, I'm gonna get heated real fast. Love both main characters. Page 48. I am at the point where I care more about one POV than the other. Uh, the point is page 60 if you're wondering. But they're, I guess, a good balance. One is a lot slower, kind of following monotonous day-to-day -day activities, which is the part that's losing me, and the other one's pretty heavy, fast-paced, passionate, covers a lot of toxic characters. It also cut off with this man denying that he romanticizes women's pain. I keep changing my mind again. Um, page 66, the conversations that are happening in the POV I said I wasn't super interested in, the more, more modern, not the modern, but the later 1998 POV. I, it's making me change my mind. <laughs> I'm at the part where I'm completely invested now, which is page 80. Anita's husband is having an entire public conversation to open what I believe is her art exhibit about whether feminist art should even exist and how it impacts male artists. So if I come back screaming in the next 30 pages, <laughs> too well written i they're they're having what i said the conversation i can't do that okay they're having the conversation um his whole stance is that art should be genderless behind me i heard a man whisper to his female companion that this was exactly the point he had been trying to make earlier if that doesn't happen all the time i started pulling out my tabs we're we're tabbing this <laughs> 85. Does nobody have an issue with the fact that our conversation about feminist art practices involves two white men does no one else find this ridiculous That was, this book's not about their romance, but that was how they met. We're just in spoiler territory from now on. I'm so sorry. The whole video is realistically, but page 112, it's so great seeing Anita's point of view and her husband Jack for certain memories because when she is fully impersonating the stereotype that he believes her to be, it shows in the writing versus him not perceiving that there's been any difference. This is so 
good. This book has me flipping back and forth between chapters so quickly because the details of abuse that she's including in her point of view versus everything that he omits or glosses over or doesn't believe is important enough. It's very routine for both of them, but the contrast between them, I finished the book four stars. If you've walked past this and thought about picking it up or it's on your TBR or you're like me and this isn't even your genre but you want to try it, try it. Good morning. It's actually not morning at all but I have my coffee and I'm gonna do a cozy check. You're not allowed to judge me because this is how I function during these. So I loved this. I enjoy picking up genres I normally wouldn't gravitate toward. There aren't many genres that I dislike if any but I was pleasantly surprised by this I really did love the two women how their lives started to mirror one another and I don't think I predicted the importance of that connection till the very end I don't think you will either I'm not gonna get into details or spoilers even though there's really not a lot about this book that could be spoiled going into the last third didn't see that coming. It's not that there's a big plot twist, but I did not see how the author was going to introduce that. <laughs> to mention some of the likes and dislikes before rating this book, I mentioned liking the parallels, also enjoying one POV more than the other. That stayed true throughout the whole book. One was more compelling, but the author did a really good job at making them two very different people. I also really liked how the author introduced themes of institutionalized racism and stereotypes, how that impacted the women individually, collectively, what changed, what didn't change between their two timelines and their individual accounts of that. That was my favorite part. Um, this isn't so much a dislike, but something to be mindful of around the conversation of this book, and that is Anna Mendieta's legacy. I mentioned that in the beginning, but I continued to research to see what the family has said about this book, and I couldn't find more. I'm going to keep looking. I found um, things about a movie being made that is trying to tell her story, and there was more criticism of that, rightfully so. So I think it's just an important conversation when discussing someone's legacy, the creative license that's in place. Her family wasn't consulted at all when writing this book, um, and there are darker themes, so be warned there is domestic abuse in this. I'm just gonna keep looking to see what they say. Overall, this was a four-star read for me. As a reader, I'm just thankful to be introduced to Anna because I had seen some of her art before, but I didn't know her name until this, so looking up her biography, it does show how much this book mimics little tidbits of like public knowledge about Anna. Um, so. Keeping those two things hand in hand and moving on to day five, the book I think I've been the most excited for. It's A Letter to the Luminous Deep by Sylvie Cathral. I'm nervous. <laughs> To give you a not so brief synopsis about what I think this book is about, so there are two people. Let me start over. This is an epistolary <laughs> romance that takes place in the sea. I think there are two people who are falling in love sending letters back and forth. Some mysterious event happens, they disappear, no one knows, but into the future, I think they're two family members or just two people want to solve the mystery and they start writing letters to each other, reading the letters that were sent by the... Let me start again. <laughs> okay, two people writing letters, falling in love, they go missing, no one knows what happened, their family find the letters, they start writing letters to each other and trying to figure out what happened. Does that make sense? If you ever find a book and you're like, wow, I've never known anyone quite like you. I think you're gonna be a fun time. I can't do this today. This is why I don't talk. Let's just read. So I sort of already mentioned what this book is about, which means I'd like to take this moment to check in with you. How are you doing? Future me is a lot calmer and regrets how my experience with this book went down, which means I would like to try again for no good reason and maybe 10 years from now. Checking in. I'm on page 28, but I have two observations. One, it's going to take me a while to be able to differentiate the four at times five different voices in these letters. A lot of them feel the same to me. All right, I'm 78 pages in and I'm not convinced I'll ever be able to separate the voices from one another. Like you almost wouldn't be able to tell that there are four narrators. Even though there are a lot of familial ties, they shouldn't be writing the exact same way. But the imagery, the magical realism, the author's really giving with that. I'm just not... I'm not sure this needs to be a series. I mean, 78 pages in and I feel like I'm still in the prologue. I also feel like I am studying the letters versus being entranced in the story they're trying to create around the letters. I do feel a little bit like I'm in class reading historical documents. I am being negative, but I can appreciate that the author is doing everything in letters, so it's harder to get into a story and feel connected to characters that don't even have real chemistry between each other yet. That might be part of it. I don't know. Page 93, we're throwing in a new character. And this character also does not have a unique voice. Keep stating it that I adore this premise and the format's really fun, 
But for me as a reader, because I'm just struggling and I'm taking you along at this point, what would have been easier? Hey, little editor's note here. I recognize I'm just asking for an entirely different book at this point, but please let me have this for a few minutes. Is if we were just looking at the letters between the two characters that fell in love, and now in the future, their family members find those letters and start making notes in the margin, like Ship of Theseus, it's a story within a story. So you're reading a book and a couple is falling in love in, love in the margins writing letters. It just would have been easier than the back to back to back letters, which is literally an epistolary novel. I don't know why I expected any different. Where I'm not getting mad at the book doing exactly what it said it's gonna do, it's doing it well. My just personal preference. I think it also would have been nice, a different variation to break up the letters. And it's not just exclusively letters between the characters. There are some announcements like colleague announcements mixed in. It would have been nice if it was broken up with like printed pages of handwritten research. There were some figures drawn in the beginning. I wish that continued. Just something to break up all of these voices. Silver lining though, the two characters that are falling in love did drop the honorifics, so progress. <laughs> I haven't, I couldn't even tell you what's going on with the plot right now, but what I can tell you is whatever this world is that we're building, individualism, not a priority here. I think I would DNF at this point if I wasn't so in love with the premise and doing a reading challenge, but I would take anything to be able to tell these voices apart. Any little quirks in their writing or habits, just natural like speaking and writing habits that a person would have. They don't have to be caricatures to be so unique, but even an overly used expression, anything to distinguish these people. <laughs> they are scholars. I understand it. And boy, does it come across like a peer reviewed journal. That could just be part of it. But you'd think as they're getting more personal with each other, that would drop, wouldn't it? <laughs> Who is this person? Were you introduced? I'm reading. Who are you? There are no emotions behind these words. <laughs> the expeditions are fun. The information on underwater terrain marine life. I just like the ocean though. That doesn't mean much. <laughs> so love drama though. And right now we have two characters discussing how to not jeopardize a mission. That's fun. Good morning. I don't know where this video left off because I had to go buy a new SD card and we're testing out a mic. I don't know how to use a mic, so we'll see how that works with audio. But thoughts on a letter to the luminous deep. My thoughts did not change about this book. <laughs> but one thing that was a little bit surprising that I'll add onto things I didn't like because <laughs> I mentioned that this is following scholars or underwater expeditions there's a lot of like scientific exploration going on but the reason for the mystery didn't match that um, so overall I don't know this was fun I think in the future I would read something from this author again just not with this writing style. But concept, 10 out of 10. I did add some notes on what I would have preferred in the book. I could not write this if I tried. So this is not any shade that it should change for my own taste. But I put uh, maybe 10% exposition would have been good instead of capturing conversation verbatim in letters. I do copy conversations and send it to friends over text. I love writing letters. Sometimes I'll do this. But at some points it felt like the book forgot it was in letters and you were just starting to read a story and then you get to the sign off and you're like, oh, you're just giving this person a play by play of what's happening. I did also say I wish there were more excerpts of things um, in the beginning of the book that does happen later. There are more. I can't find any, but there were like copies of manuscripts and translations and different figures kind of sprinkled throughout the story. Overall ranking, the concepts really boosting it up there for me, but I would say like a 2.5 but me reading the book considering i would have dnf'd it the rankings probably void <laughs> moving on to day six it's day six and we're reading you again by kate goldbeck um another romance i know absolutely nothing about but have seen all over book talk and have heard great things about i really don't know anything about this but i was looking at the cover and he's looking a little bit like adam driver this isn't raylo no one said this was raylo that's just a coincidence right that he looks a little bit like that Right? Maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe I see Adam Driver and everyone. Let's start reading this. Have you ever had a stranger be rude to you? Now imagine that that was your meet cute. Yeah, that would be mortifying, right? You know what would make it worse? If that person was also your roommate's boyfriend and your second meeting went just as terribly. But it's okay because fate will keep having you two meet until you get it right. Finally, please, for the love of God. This was a great meet cute. That was a fast meet cute. 15, the Les Mis reference is killing me. Bring him home is crazy. <laughs> Bring him home is So if you, you had a one night stand, mm -hmm. you wake up, 
they're singing in the shower. Oh! Has to be. This was in the shower? Yeah, he's, I think he's singing in the shower. Or no, he's singing as he's like getting his clothes back on. One more day? That has to be better than bring him home. What's One the... Day, what do you <laughs> the people say? <laughs> What's the like red and black? No, that'd be awful. I just realized the lyrics of that as I said it. Red, the blood of angry men. All lame miss songs would be inappropriate. It's just the the first, what's the intro? Jean Valjean. One. Your parole's begun. You know what that means. Yes, it means I'm free. No! <laughs> Who am I? Jean Valjean. Oh, there's a love song. But a love song after a one night stand? That but is isn't that, crazy. like, wouldn't you be in a good mood after a one night stand? Hopefully. But a love song? At least it's not the, uh, Eponine. <laughs> Either Eponine. There's, there's two and neither Eponine. one's great. <laughs> it's just stars. more sense if a man if after a one night stand i'd feel love bombed i'd be like freak but you'd rather have bring him home I, the I think it'd be god on high and bring him home <laughs> god on high. i think that'd be so if you had to pick a song it'd have to be any other song that's not just so depressing there there would be so many options besides that. you could choose any other broadway song i think Michael in the bathroom. Totally <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Grace is actually really safe. Ooh. Red. What's the Ooh. song in Cats? Why? Memory. <laughs> Memory. Yeah, I think Cats. I'd rather even have a room where it happened. <laughs> no, no, the roommate's boyfriend just showed up. She just let him in. And as she's bringing him into the apartment, you hear bring him home. I think the main guy character is the roommate's boyfriend. <laughs> I want the bring him home guy to be the main guy character. What the fuck? He just what? Why? Why? Because he's saying bring him home after sex, Lizzie. I want to know his psyche and why he is that way. Actor. Page 15. This banter is really fun, but this is going to be messy. I don't really like third person with romance books, so maybe this will change my mind. This is so toxic. Oh, 76 actually made me laugh out loud. Not even like a, it was, it was like a cackle. All right, I'm on page 81. I love both of them. I don't think I've read a romance like this where both characters had such strong personalities. I was thinking this is the type of book you want to see as a movie and you could picture it being a movie, but you don't actually want it to happen because you know they'd mess it up. Page 248, so many tabs. Page 285, that's it. I finished, I finished you again. And I didn't film much. One, because I forgot. I was having a really good time in this book. It was really cute. There were bits where I could see it would be slower for someone, but I really liked that because there weren't many issues in the book other than two people just being extremely messy and keeping themselves from happiness. And I love reading about that. It was so funny. I was caught off guard by how many time jumps are in this book and every single time it happened, I didn't see it coming. It was a really fun time on a spicy scale level. Not as spicy as not in love conversationally more spicy if that makes sense the double entendres in this book are like every other chapter and i was eating it up <laughs> i just don't really have any complaints i do love that when you get to that scene he is very cautious of her comfort zone he's super attentive reading her and making sure that she's on the same page as him and i loved that because the entire book they're not on the same page by any means. I really, I think I would rank this a three, three and a half stars, which again is not a bad thing. Those are my comfort reads. Those are the romances I recommend the most. Actually, this would be a good book to get into reading. This would be a good introduction to contemporary romance. I kind of want you to read it. Yeah, for the, I got the Lame Miz reference I have. We both like messy people. Yeah. <laughs> messy people are the best people to read about. They're so- I don't want to read about security. No. If they're also perfect, it's kind of just boring. You know when they're advertised to be a jerk and they kind of like just spilled coffee accidentally or something? Yeah. He's actually kind of a jerk. Yeah, I don't want my friends with actual jerks though. No, but that clear. his like over time, mm, the, the growth 
it's the growth in this. We know how I feel about a character arc. Great character arc. It actually did have character arcs. Maybe that's why I really liked it. But this is actually individual development. And I don't think they can credit each other for it either. They were just there as a support system. I like that. That's like us. I, it is. I forgot to mention, I did look up what I could find um, from Anna Mendieta's family and their opinion of Anita De Monte last last. And there is an article, there's a few pages on cliffnotes.com, um, which is really interesting, and I might link this. Most of it is about Amazon's adaptation because they're taking everything in her likeness, basically. Um, and it's their fight to have rights of her work and to have a seat at the table when her story is being told. Her niece, I believe, was given an advanced reader's copy of the book, but most of it isn't about the book itself. So if you were interested, if you wanted to read the book and wanted to know kind of where her family stands, I thought that was really interesting week. It is finally day seven. So we're gonna move on to A Fellowship of Bakers and Magic by Jay Penner, because I just need something cozy and cute. This was described to me as a fantasy Great British Bake Off. I did have to get the hardcover too, because it's so pretty. <laughs> Even read the back, it is literally a bake off. A human, a dwarf, and an elf walk into a bake off. So essentially there's a human in a magical world who doesn't have magic, but she loves to bake, so her neighbor nominates her for this baking show, and she just complains about it for some reason. Page 30, two notes. I had to look up the genre because it reads like YA slash middle grade, and I wasn't sure if it was. I don't think it is. It comes up as fantasy comedy, but it is really cute so far. Other thing, is this a romance? Not to be that person that picks up every book and is shipping characters, but it's just a romance. <laughs> I do want to say, before I make this comment, I understand it's the entire point of the genre, so I shouldn't be complaining, but newer cozy fantasy releases are starting to feel like they should have been a short story, but someone said add 200 pages, and so it's 200 pages of nothing, but that's the point of cozy, and that's kind of the fun part. It's like Animal Crossing in a book. But sometimes I'm like, this could have been shorter. <laughs> You know in a book, when a character is withholding information about their true intentions? That's happened on like every other page. Every time this man starts saying something, he stops. Am I the problem this week? <laughs> on page 76 and it's cute. It's definitely not middle grade because of the romance involved. I mean, there's reading between the lines. It's, it's clean. But it reads like middle grade. You know Inside Out, the movie? Sadness, that is this character. She is very self-deprecating, which relatable, but everything that comes out of her mouth is like pulling teeth. Her mind, as I said that she developed a can-do attitude. We question all of your abilities and have imposter syndrome, but then want to do it anyway. I love that for her. No one cares about punctuality in this. I regret people telling me that it's like the Great British Bake Off. The baking itself for the first round was like one page. <sighs> If he went all the way out of his way to ensure that she gets into this baking competition because that's his soulmate, even though he keeps reassuring her it's for your talent, it's your skill, and she's saying no one would know about me, I'm magicless, I shouldn't be in the competition. In a way, she was kind of right if that's why he knows her name. I'm on page 162. The friendship's really cute. I'm on page 184. This is really cute. This did remind me of the Bake Off because they were helping each other. You know on Disney Channel when it was, the character would be like, that's not my dream, Dad. It's yours. Or I'm not giving up on my dream. I'm giving up on yours. That type of thing. It just happened in this book. I've been waiting for it to happen in a book as an adult. It took me officially 212 pages to get into this story, but now we're getting into Faded Mate's territory. Spoiler. Let me read you what he said. I, I need to be near you. It hurts when we're apart. That's all my little heart needed. <laughs> I'm just a girl. Why am I so easy to please? We made it. It's the next morning. I finished this last night. I don't know if I want to rank the books. This um, maybe wasn't the best way to end the week. And I don't know if I blame book talk for how it was marketed. I don't think I do because it is how the book is straight up marketed when you look it up. I tried finding the age demographic. It said adult. So this to me is a middle grade book. There is nothing wrong with that. I love reading middle grade books, but what I don't expect from an adult book is a middle grade writing level. I actually read um, eight books this week. One of them was The Spell Shop. So if you're looking for a cozier romance, that one I gave like a two and a half to three stars. I would recommend that over this. The Baking Show, I would say kind of took a back seat until the last third. 
So if you are looking for those vibes of when you watch the show, this is not it. I would have loved this when I was younger, following a more insecure main character. Me as an adult, I've come so far. I can't read an insufferable main character like this anymore. <laughs> Overall, two stars. One star is too mean, three stars. I didn't actually enjoy it. The romance part, the subplot, that was pretty cute. I can't be mean to books. I might not be able to rank them because I think their genres and writing styles, they're all too different to compare them, but I can give my favorite, except that I don't think I know what my favorite is. It's not The Fellowship of Bakers and Magic. It's not A Letter to the Luminous Deep. The Ministry of Time felt like two different books. And Nina Del Monte Last Last is up there for best writing of the week. Next to Before I Let Go. Not in Love was really cute. Not in Love if you're in a reading slump is my nomination. That's my shout out. Before I Let Go and You Again might be tied. You Again gave me what I needed in the moment. Before I Let Go is just a good book. That's just a book you could pick up year round and it would be good. They're nothing alike, but they're tied right now. So thank you for joining me for reading seven books in seven days. Also have a Discord server now if you're interested in joining me for any reading challenges. I want to give my updates a more live updates there so go join that we do 24 hour readathons and i really want to do this again because my tbr is it's stacking up